If you saw a urinal in an art exhibition, what do you think about it? If you're thinking about, oh my god, why put this thing here? Then please take a look at my video. If you're thinking about, wow, such a classic artwork can be seen here, the ticket is super value. Then congratulations, you can skip and wait for my next video. Hello everyone, I'm Grace Lee. I'm your young art gardener. Welcome to my channel, Grace's Art Garden. The artist I'm going to introduce is Marcel Duchamp, one of the most important artists of the 20th century. And his output influenced the development of modern and contemporary art. People commented on him as his appearance changed the course of modern Western art. He famously dubbed a urinal art and named it The Fountain. The work is regarded by art historians and theorists of avant-garde as a major landmark in 20th century art. To understand Duchamp is to understand the process of Western modern art. So let me give a quick summary of art history before Duchamp. 40,000 years ago, an ancient hunter drew a bison on the cave wall. The era of storytelling with pictures in our human DNA has begun. This is prehistoric art. The highest pursuit of the artists that painted like what they saw, the sculptors of ancient Greece, focused on the athletic body. An this is ancient art. The facial features and postures of figures in medieval religious paintings implied their life and destiny. This is medieval art. Leonardo made the entire Renaissance history and the goal of painting images because no one painted more like images than his scientific anatomy and perspective methods. Since then, artists have begun to pursue the expressiveness of pictures, trying to add as much information as possible to elements in the painting. Interpreting the stories behind each element in the picture is a favorite conversational resource for the audience. These are Baroque, Rococo, Romanticism, and Realism. However, after the first Industrial Revolution in 1860, the emergence of photography technology has changed the artist's understanding of the world drastically. The creative methods of the past tens of thousands of years have suddenly been completely broken. After all, who can paint likely better than a camera? Who can carry a lot of information more easily than a photography? Because of the camera, artists in the late 18th and early 19th century suddenly found that they no longer needed to paint portraits and landscape as they saw. They had to rediscover the meaning of their existence. Monet used dim color blocks to capture the fleeting moments in the industrial city. This is Impressionism. Cezanne challenged the traditional perspective and used colors to express space. This is Post-Impressionism. Picasso used multiple perspectives to look at an object and drew figures and scenes that look like fragments. This is Cubism. Photograph, movies, and even TV. People had too many ways to get in touch with new things. Artists needed to re-examine their work. With the development of psychology and brain science, art began to challenge human thoughts and imagination. Artists of this period were exploring more possibilities of seeing things in their way. And these may not be possible with machines, which also allows artists to keep their jobs and value of their existence. In this wave of genres, Dadaism was born during the First World War. 1914 to 1918. Dada artists opposed logic, reason, war, and all aesthetics related to modern society. The artists used a variety of ways to make seemingly absurd expressions. As long as it's anti-traditional, it's Dada's. Let's go back to Duchamp. Many people cared about artists, but they didn't care about how artists become artists. How can an artist become an artist is much more interesting than the artist himself. Born in Blainville, Normandy, France, Duchamp was the son of Nottery and the younger brother of the painter Jacques Villain and the Cubist sculptor Raymond Duchamp Villain. He studied at Academic Julian in 1904 and 5. For a long time, his father has been providing financial support to him so that he does not have to work to make ends meet. And he had to go the way he wants to go. For his artistic life, he had never planned or planned, but only follows two keywords, fun and fun. His early figure paintings were influenced by Matisse and Fauvism. But in 1911, he created a personal brand of Cubism, combining earthy colors. 
mechanical, and visceral forms, an depiction of movement which owes as much of Futurism as to Cubism. His New Descending Staircase, number 2, 1912. The painting depicts a mechanistic motion of a nude with superimposed facets. Similar to motion pictures, it shows the elements of both the fragmentation and the synthesis of cubists, and the movement and dynamism of the futurists. This painting was sent to Cubism exhibition in Paris, but was rejected. This disappointed Duchamp. The disappointment was not the rejection, but the fact that Cubism had only been popular for two or three years at this time. The people of the association established clear boundaries for the works, which, in his opinion, was a kind of naive. After the outbreak of World War I, Duchamp left France for New York. His artistic career developed in the United States. The tolerance of New York gave Duchamp a lot of creative freedom. In 1913, his painting, New Descending a Staircase, number two, which was rejected by French, became popular in Armory Art Fair in New York. In 1917, Duchamp sent a ready-made urinal anonymously to the exhibition organized by Independent Artists Association of New York. The work was entitled Fountain. He bought the urinal in a store, and he just signed the name R. Mutt on it. After much debate by the board members, most of whom did not know Duchamp had submitted it, about whether the piece was or was not art. Fountain was hidden from the view during the show. As caused a long-lasting discussion. What is a work of art and what is art? How far is the distance between art and life? If the urinal, a kind of ready-made, the product can become a work of art or even a masterpiece, then what else cannot become art? Duchamp selected mass-produced, commercially available, often utilitarian objects, designating them as art and giving them titles. Ready Mace disrupted the centuries of thinking about artists' role as a skilled creator of original handmade objects. Instead, Duchamp argued, an ordinary object could be elevated to the dignity of a work of art to be mere choice of an artist. The ready made also defied the notion that art must be beautiful. Duchamp claimed to have chosen everyday objects based on reaction of visual indifference, with at the same time a total absence of good or bad taste. In doing so, Duchamp paved the way for a conceptual artwork that was in the service of the mind, as opposed to purely retinal art, intended only to please the eye. Also, the concept of the fountain has a long history and the beautiful and visual meaning in Western and Eastern literature and art. In Angel's famous oil painting, Fountain, a beautiful young girl holds a crock pot on her hand and the clear spring girls down, which is hailed as showing noble and solemn beauty. Duchamp named the work Fountain, and the urinal is obviously for men. The shape of the urination is similar to spring water, but the picture and psychological feeling are opposite. In December 2004, Duchamp's Fountain was voted as the most influential artwork of the 20th century by 500 selected British art world professionals. Second place was afforded to Picasso's La Dimoiselle de Vigno, 1907, and third to Andy Warhol's Marilyn Diptych, 1962. The Independent noted in February 2008 article that the single work Duchamp invented conceptual art and severe forever the traditional link between artist labor and the merit of the work. It can be said that starting from Duchamp's fountain, art is beautiful from the traditional perspective and understandable paintings and sculptures have blossomed. And performance art, the art of poverty, have been developed. So contemporary era has started. The artist's choice can make an ordinary object become a noble work of art, Duchamp said. Around this concept, Duchamp also brought many ready mates to challenge traditional artistic concepts. Although this view become easier for us to understand after Andy Warhol and pop art, it did cause a revolution in our history at that time. Therefore, if we want to appreciate Duchamp's representative work, Fountain, it is impossible to understand it from an aesthetic point of view, because the significance of this work lies in anti-traditional aesthetics. For example, in the work Three Standard Stoppage, Duchamp prepared 
three one meter long threads. Stain them with paint and let them go from a height of one meter to let the threads fall freely onto the canvas on the ground. Then make these three random lines into a one meter roller that is usually used to standardize the distance. Duchamp made a silent protest against the so-called standards in our, in our history in the casual way. When I was in elementary school, I knew that someone drew a beard on Mona Lisa's face. It was unacceptable. But after I studied art history and understood Duchamp's entire thoughts, I was completely immersed. Throughout his life, Duchamp has been dispelling all kinds of meanings, fighting against all kinds of definitions, norms, forms, what masters, masterpieces. He does not care about. Even the Louvre cannot attract him. Because the evolution criteria are doubtful, he also didn't feel that what he had made can be the greatest significance to society in the future. He spent eight years on the creation of big glass. One time the glass was cracked, one work was delivered to the exhibition, he didn't care. He said happily, not bad, these cracks are magical. Duchamp is the originator of contemporary art. Duchamp is so advanced and unconventional. In my eyes, he is the well-deserved father of contemporary art. At this time, I will ask you again, who? Change the course of Western art history? Your answer must be Duchamp. Who changed our understanding of the term art for all mankind? Yes, Duchamp. Fully understand the past and create the future. Will we all realize Duchamp facing a new era? Don't forget his courage to respond to the mainstream. This courage comes from a full understanding of the past development process, dissatisfaction with the current reality, and strong anticipation for the new world and the future. What does the future look like? Isn't it waiting for us to create it? This is Duchamp.